Uh, say Peter, hold on, say Peter. Hey, hey, Bishop, I'm sorry, I was in my Bible to the class. I'm gonna call you, call you right back. That's okay. I'm sorry, I had the wrong phone. Good evening, St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church family and friends, both the phone line and the Zoom line. Uh, it is good to see everyone tonight. Let me take a moment to shout out uh, Reverend Edwards for her three-night revival that she did over the last three nights in her teaching. I'm thankful for your, your again, your commitment and your diligence to the Word of God. I want to thank God for those of you on the phone and on the Zoom line. Uh, and thank God I look at some, see some, some faces on the Zoom line. I'm glad to see all of you all. I want to take another moment to encourage those of you who are on the prayer line who uh, have a computer. Some of y'all got new computers. I know you do. I like to see you on the phone, line, on the Zoom line from time to time as well. Uh, so and the reason why is it, I think it does, we try to be interactive in our teaching, all of us do. And I think that it may help sometimes if possible. I'm not saying nothing wrong with the phone line, but I am saying that in our absence from one another, that I think sometimes being on the Zoom line could help. Plus, this might be selfish. I like to see your happy, smiley faces. Um, we reminded everyone last Sunday, we'll continue to do so, that in the first mm -hmm. on watch night service, December 31st, uh, we'll be um, coming together um, in totality for the first time uh, since March 5th, uh, the second Sunday, March 2020. And so we do want us to, we, and we're going to have you know, between now and, and, and watch night, we'll give everyone instructions on, you know, what, what, our, what we're going to do. Nothing more than what we do normally. I mask and you know for those of you you know who which try to social distance which social distance as much as we can uh, we do pray and encourage those who have not um who are comfortable with the vaccination who are comfortable with it to get it available a lot of different places um but most of all we want to be safe and worship the lord and not in that order we want to worship the lord and be safe that's what we want to do so tonight we're going to pick up um and we're going to go to the book of second john now we started off at first John, so we talked about first John, first Peter, uh, and James. And each of these were um, both James, John, and Peter's first epistles. Uh, now we're coming back to John's second letter to the same, to, well, his second letter. It wasn't to the same people, but it was his second letter. And so as we look at second John, this is second John, uh, I want to remind you again that, that while John was an older man when he wrote his first letter, he had gotten even older. He was about 90 years old when he wrote this second letter. Uh, he had outlived all of his, uh, um, 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 he had outlived all of his, um apost apostle friends all those who have been disciples he had outlived them all um he was the only one that you may remember that died of a natural death natural causes all the others were martyred as a result of their faith in christ and it is clear in, in the tone of this letter two things uh that that john is more convinced than he ever was before about a few things the god's truth and god's love and and god's desire or God's command for us to love one another. That's this word, command for us to love one another. Uh, Sister Jackie Thompson, Deacon S. Jackie Thompson, I had a conversation just the other day and it reminded me of something just to share with you all today, um, tonight rather. Um, sometimes we, we hear the word and sometimes somebody might say, well, I heard that before. But here's the thing about being a Christian. And John shows us this. The repetition of God's word is not bad and it should not bore us. The repetition of God's words should strengthen us and, and cause us to walk stronger in our walk than ever before. Repetition of something is good. Just like I, and I, if y'all let me go to a pot, to a recipe for a minute, I, I you know, and I'm gonna let y'all taste this macaroni and cheese I make later because I perfected this thing during the pandemic. I'll let y'all know it. Some of y'all, you know, say, oh, Pastor, I'm gonna show y'all. I but I but I it's what I did was I used to just cook it however I felt different times. But once I got the routine and the ritual, I go through it. Now I don't have to look at the um the recipe anymore. No I just know exactly how much of what to put in there, and I do it, and it turns out great every time. It does. Okay. Now I'm not bragging. Past time I'm not patting myself on the back. I just made some good macaroni and cheese. <laughs> what I'm saying about repetition is, as I repeat that recipe every time, the outcome is good. It's the same and it's good. As we are repetitious about our study of the word of God, it, it, the outcome is good. We're stronger. We're wiser. We're better. We're pleased. We're joyful. We're full of peace. Sometimes in the Christian life, we, we hear the word of God, but because of the stressors of the world, we kind of forget what we're supposed to do in those times. And as a result, we end up sad and depressed. I was talking to my older son. I said, I said, there, there's not a need to change anything. I said, sometimes the outcome you're looking for doesn't happen the first time, but just continue in the Lord. And he'll bring to pass or bring about 
the goal that he has for you. And, and, and if it corresponds with what you want, he'll bring about the goal that you're looking for. But I said, but most importantly, it's about the, the staying in the word. And so we have to be reminded of this. And that's what John's going to do uh, in his epistle to us tonight. We're going to see some words we've seen before. Embrace it. We're going to see some 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 um, some some truths we've seen before. Embrace it because this is what makes us strong. Uh, I think Deacon Lyons on here. A good workout is repetition. Now you can go in the gym and do one bench press, but they ain't gonna make you stronger. But De Deacon Lyons, you tell me this: if you go in there and, and do bench presses over and over, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get what? You're gonna get stronger. And so that's what we as Christians have to understand: the repetition, of the word, causes us to be repetitious in our lives, and that causes us to be stronger in the Lord. Let's go to Second Second John, uh, and I'm gonna read just a couple of verses to get us started here tonight. Um, in in Second John, John's second letter, and he's gonna tell us who he's writing to. Um, he he is writing this. It's a personal letter he wrote to another church, but it was clear in this that John wrote this letter to churches, all churches. Um, it is probably the show. I think it's the shortest of the. It's the shortest New Testament book, uh, except for Third John. And, and more importantly, this it, it even though he doesn't identify himself by saying his name, he is clearly identified as the, as the as the writer. This letter is written for the purpose of to um to address Christians, especially listen to this in regards to their missionary the, the missionary efforts of false teachers and the dangers of welcoming them wherever they they should arise. So let me see if I can put this in the context of twenty twenty one. It's written to all Christians to be careful. Uh, false teachers. Now he used it, it's, he, it. False teachers were were going around and trying to share a fake doctrine and false gospel, just like we talked about in Jude. Um, uh, and, and so, as a result of that, he he shares this gospel. He shares the gospel. Um, to, he shares his word to them to combat false teachings. Their their mission was to to sow false teaching. John's mission was to strengthen the Christian to ignore false teaching just like jews was in many ways it, 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 the theme is simply similar quite frankly now let's let's start off here in chapter one verse one he announces who he is the elder unto the elect lady and her children all right he is the elder why i just said he was 90 years old he was an older he, he was the last of the of the disciples he was the last person that walked with christ and so he wasn't saying I'm an elder like that was a title. He was just saying, I'm elder because I'm older. I'm more mature. I've been around. I've seen. Just like he said in his first letter. I saw. I heard. I held. I observed Jesus. Now he's just saying I'm the elder. And I'm writing this letter unto the elect lady and her children. He's referring to this lady as a church. Now maybe that it was a person in that church as well. But it's clear if we read this letter, he's talking to the church overall. Um, and he didn't name, name the church. He said, I'm writing to the elders of the, the, the church of St. Peter, because at that time, there was still a great deal of prosecution and persecution among the church. So he knew that they would know. Perhaps he had a relationship with them. Perhaps there had been other other um, conversations in person he'd have with them. So he said, I'm writing to the lady of the church and her children. That is the, the leadership of the church. And then those who were in the church, those who were followers of Jesus Christ the, the, or, or, or disciples of Christ. And he says the elect, again, that corresponds with both um, Paul's um, conversation that we are chosen um, and then Peter's uh, declaration that we are the elect. That's, that's, that's what he was saying. And that was, that was a word that was commonly used then. Uh, and it should be commonly used now because that's who we are. We are the elect. We're chosen by God. And so as I'm writing to the chosen, chosen people of God uh, and, and the children, the younger, they're still chosen, but they're the, the ones who are growing the Lord. He says, and look what he says next. He says, whom I love in the truth. John, I can imagine, uh, I prayed. Can I tell you, after I prayed when I was sick, I said, Lord, if you just let me be an older preacher. Uh, I didn't say how old. I said, I'm an older preacher. Um, I've always admired uh, older preachers, whether they were pastors or preachers, whatever the case was, because I got, I, I could see a combination of the, the their being spirit-filled, their knowledge of God, in their confidence and trust in God. And therefore, when they spoke, they spoke with a level of boldness and a level of, uh, I think my dad used to use the word flat-footed. They spoke with a level of boldness and flat-footedness that they couldn't be moved. And as a result, I was encouraged by what they said. I, I think that John, John now is in this place in his life where he could just say what he feels is guided by the spirit. He says, I love y'all, the elect church, the elect lady and her children. I love this church. 
I love y'all in the truth. He said, my love is not born out of the fact that you all are popular or charismatic. He said, I love y'all because y'all in the truth and I'm in the truth. I love you because you're in the truth. Now, hold on to that because we're going to see it again in a minute. He says, and not only I, but also all they that have done the truth. He says, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, John the Elder. He said, but it's not just me that loves y'all. He said, all those who love the truth, all those who love the word of God and the truth that is the word of God. He said, we love you as well. In other words, what he is showing is there should be, there was for him and there should be for us. And, and really it is for us as well. It's just, we have to see it for what it is. A, a love that is shared for those people who are in Christ, who are in the truth. We should love each other. We shouldn't allow geographic differences, racial differences, uh, age differences, um, economic differences to separate us. If you in Christ, if you in the truth and I'm in the truth, we all love each other because we're in the truth. We're in the truth together. We are in the truth together. And so John says, I love you in the truth. And not me, but also all that have known the truth. Anybody who knows the truth, that's Christ. The word of God, the word of Christ. Anybody who knows Christ and his word, love the, each other, is John the same because of truth. And likewise for us today, there should be a love among the Christians because we in the truth. Now, in verse two, he says, for the truth's sake, for the sake of the truth, he says, which dwelleth in us. J John introduces a concept that I think is transformational. The truth, as we accept Christ, all right, as we accept Christ, what we have in us is, is John, Paul lets us know that we have the deposit of the Holy Spirit. But John says it also in that reality, I can hear John saying this, that we have the truth, that we have the truth that is in us. Let me see if I can read something for you that may be a little bit helpful here in, the, in, in John's gospel. He says um, in, in chapter one of, of gospel of John, he says this, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. He's talking about Jesus. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him, spirit talking about Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. I'm in verse 6 now. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men uh, through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. Verse 9, he says, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which are born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Look what he says in verse 14. And we beheld his glory, talking about Jesus, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. What was Jesus full of, John? Grace and truth. In other words, when we receive Jesus as our Savior, there is then a deposit of the truth. This is what he says. The truth dwells in us and shall be with us forever. I could take 30 minutes on that one. The truth, which is God's word and Jesus, which Jesus is the word, okay, dwells in us. John, I'm sorry, Paul puts it that we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit. That's true. But we also, in having the deposit of the Holy Spirit, in that is Jesus, because Jesus is that there's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. OK, so we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit, which is our earnest for what we will receive in the glory and eternity in the presence of God. But also we have this deposit of the truth, which who is is who Jesus is, because he says he's full of grace and truth. And I want to be clear. It's not like it was 50 percent grace, 50 percent truth. He was 100 percent grace, full of 100 percent grace and 100 percent what? Truth. All right. And so the truth, then, through our relationship with God, through Christ, dwells in us. And this is the part I love in verse two. And the truth shall be with us forever. How about this? Things change in the world, but not the truth. And the truth dwells where? In us. And the truth will be, uh, be with us how long? Forever. Legislation may change. The economy may change. What's bad may change. Everybody knows the iPhone going to change. Everybody knows that that kind of stuff going to change. But guess what won't change? The truth. And the truth is Jesus. And the truth is in us. And the truth is with us. I, I love that right there. I can stop class right there because I'm happy that I have something and somebody who is in me that will not change and is with me forever. Many of us have had friends who are with us a portion of our lives, but they kind of walked away. Sometimes we just drew apart. But how about this? 
we will never be able to grow apart from Jesus and Jesus will never grow apart from us. Why? Because he's the truth and he's in us. He's not with us. He's in us. And in, in and being in us, he is with us. His with us is not conjunctive. His with us is positional. And because he is in us, guess what? He will not leave us. He is with us forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that right there. He, he is with us forever. Let me go. Can I go one more verse tonight? He says this here in verse four, in verse three. Nice. I'm ready to greet you, uh, elect lady church. Grace be with you. Now watch this. This is interesting. This is a little different from most of the greetings. He said, I'm praying that grace be with you and mercy and peace. And he lets us know where's the source of this grace, mercy, and peace. Where is it from, John? God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in what? Truth and love. Now, I might just better get this and I might be, might stop here. It, I hear John saying, as if I'm talking to him, John is saying, Christians, elect lady and her children, believers at St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church and 2021 family and friends. I want you to understand that grace and mercy is with you. Mercy and peace is with you. Why? Because it's coming from God the Father, who is a God of mercy and, and, and the God of peace. And from the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is the Son of the Father. He lets us know that that relationship is 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 the same. That relationship is, is connected in such a way that we receive that mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. And we receive it in truth and love. In other words, it is given out of truth because that's what God has... If we could connect verse 2 to verse 3, Lord have mercy. I see it now, Lord. Truth, which is in us, then it turns around and gives us that truth, Jesus, who's in us. That's why he connects between God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Truth is in us. That's Jesus. And then he gives us mercy and peace out of his truth and by his love. Like he's in us. He said, I'm giving them truth. I'm giving them this truth. And I love them. So I'm going to give it what? More. If you love somebody, don't you give them something more and more with more excitement? Why? Because you love them. That's what it's saying right here. John is, again, that's the beauty of getting old. John got old, but he didn't get, he didn't get forgetful. He remembered all that he experienced with Jesus. He remembered all the words of Jesus. And now he's teaching on a level of not somebody who tangentially knows Jesus. He's teaching on a level of somebody who understands what God has really done for the believer. Woo. He, he says, I'm trying to tell you something. I, I ain't heard. I know this right here, y'all. He says, I know this. I'm, I know for a lot of doubt that Jesus is in us. And he didn't make it, he didn't make it like it was just him. He's in us. His truth is in us. And he's given us out of his truth. He's given us what? He's given us mercy and peace out of his truth, in truth, and in love. That's what John, that's what John said. We can stop right there because we all, all feel better about who we are in Christ. I don't care if you got a nickel in your pocket. You somebody in Christ because in Christ, we have the presence of the truth. It dwells in us forever. And then from that, we are fed a nonstop diet of mercy, Lord have mercy, and grace, and peace. Mm -hmm. And it comes from God the Father. See, the world can't give you grace. The world can't give you mercy. And the world sure won't give you peace. It can't give you peace either. It comes from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who's already in us. The Son of the Father, he gives you truth and love. John says this. I'm going to stop here at verse 4. I'm going to stop. John says, I rejoice greatly. John says, I can hear John 90 years old, but he was dancing. Reverend Edwards, he was dancing when he said, I re rejoice greatly that I have found of thy children. He said, of the children of God, my brothers and sisters, my children, because I'm older than them. He said, I, I'm walking in truth. It's almost like somebody sent John a text and said, John, guess what? The people of that church you love so much, they're walking in truth. And John started dancing. He got happy. And I can see this in a, in a way. The, 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 the leader, the pastor, the bishop, those who are over the congregations want nothing more. The true teachers of God want nothing more than their people to be in the word, to be in the truth, to walk in the truth, to know the truth, and to manifest that truth in their lives. That's what John said. I rejoice greatly. He doesn't just say, you know, I feel good about it. No, John said, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children. I heard about your children walking in truth. He said, in the same, and he said, as we have received the commandment from the Father, he says, you are not walking in some made up truth. And it's important that John said that because, again, remember, the challenge was there was false teaching. He said, you're walking the truth that we, and again, I love it because John could have been arrogant. John's going to say, hey, I got the message first. John didn't say that. He said, as we have received 
a commandment from the Father. He said the same thing that God told us, y'all walking in, and I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm joyful about it. John, now, and again, I want us to keep this in mind when we read these next several days. John's excitement stems from the fact that he's is watching people walk in truth. He said, I'm just going to keep encouraging you to do it. He said, I could just step back and say, ah, you know, y'all going to make it. But he said, no, I want to keep encouraging you to walk in the truth. I, as I tell my son sometimes, both of them, um, you know, they sometimes they come back to me and say, well, you know, they I say, well, Dad, what you think about this? And I say, well, what did I tell you when you were 10, 12, 14, 16, 18? And they repeat what I say. I said, keep doing it. Don't, don't change up now. Keep doing it. I say the same, that John is saying the same thing to Christian. The truth you got, stay with it. Stay on it. Stay in it. Stay with it. Let it be in you. Let it give you out of that truth. Standing in the truth of God, let it give you the peace and the grace and the mercy of God. Stay with it. I remind them, John is reminding us that God told him to tell us. God said, John, tell St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church, the one on 1558 Venetia Drive and all their family and friends, tell every believer everywhere that, that they must walk and continue this truth and walk in this truth. And as a result, they will experience this, this grace, mercy, and peace. And as a result, they'll know that I dwell with them. And that's the thing. That we, we'll know that God dwells with us, and he's with us forever. What more encouraging thing for that than the believer to, to know that God, the truth, Jesus Christ is in us, and, and then will never leave us, that he is with us forever. And out of that, we just got unmerited. I think about lamentations now. I just saw it differently now. I just saw it just now. We get new mercy every day. But guess what? That new mercy doesn't come from some over there somewhere. It's already in us. So instead of saying it's a deposit, God, Jesus simply releases new mercy in us every day. And he does it out of his love and out of his truth. I'm going to stop. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. God bless y'all tonight. I'm going to stop here tonight. I don't know what time it is now. 7 20 cents. Okay, I didn't go over. I'm grateful for y'all, and I pray that these words in, in first, second John will just, again, anchor us. An I want us to be anchored. That's what I want for St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church family. Friend. I want us to be anchored in the Lord so mm -hmm. that that's uh, we are who we belong to. That's A. But I want us to be anchored in such a way that our walk is commensurate with the walk of Christ and that we walk in the joy of the Lord, that we experience his grace, unmerited favor, his mercy, his love and kindness, and that peace that surpasses all understanding as we walk with him. I love y'all tonight, and it's glad to say we got 15 over here on Zoom, and I know we got a lot on the phone line. I love each of you. I pray this word would just warm our hearts tonight and strengthen us in all that we do, that God may be glorified, that we may be satisfied, and then those that God has sent us to serve will be edified. God bless you. Let us pray. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we do praise you for the love that you've shown us in giving us a Savior, Jesus, as John said the first time, the, the, uh, the appropriation of our sins, the righteous, our advocate, and now we know him as our truth. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus as our Savior. And I pray, God, that we will stand in these four verses, strong, strengthened by you, and experiencing the manifestation of your grace, mercy, and peace in every aspect of our lives. God, we love you. We do thank you. We do praise you. I pray, God, tonight, I, I pray this prayer, Lord, that every household tonight will be electrified by the power of your Holy Spirit as we come to the realization of what you're doing and what you're doing and done for us and what you will do for us through Christ, the truth. And let us know it's done, Lord, out of love that you have for your people. I pray, God, now that you would give, let your word now, Lord, touch every believer, every family, every household. And I pray, God, that these words, Lord, would, would, would cause us to walk better, serve better, live better, love better. Let it get in our hearts that our hearts can be strengthened. Let it get in our minds that our minds may be protected from the fire and darts of Satan. And also that we may have peace to surpass all understanding. Let your word get in our ears that we can hear it as opposed to the winds of the world. And let your word, Lord, get in our mouths that we can declare to a dying world, to each other, and to ourselves. Let it get in our throats our vocal cords, our lungs, and that we may declare with, the, with, with conviction, like John did, to the world, conviction to each other, conviction to ourselves. We love you. We thank you. We praise your Lord. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This phone line. Hold on, Amen. Zoom. Stop this phone line. Amen. I love y'all. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Let's see who's not. We got...